This is the podcast version of two articles on metrowild.co.uk, Beyond Climate Anxiety and a book review of The Climate Book. I'm Yang Mei Ui. I'm a writer and podcaster. Metro Wild celebrates our relationship with cities and nature. The first article, Beyond Climate Anxiety, was published on metrowild.co.uk on 24th November 2023. Beyond Climate Anxiety. What can we do in the face of climate change? How can we continue to live in our creative and dynamic cities and also take care of the sustaining natural world that we depend on? Metro Wild is my new personal project exploring the relationship between our city lives and our wild nature. In the last year, I spent a lot of time getting to know my anxiety in the form of my podcast, The Anxiety Advantage. It was a challenge for me to talk frankly about my own anxiety, but it was rewarding to discover that by opening up about my own struggle, others felt that they were not alone in theirs. The part of podcasting I love is talking to amazing people. I had the privilege of chatting with a range of people about their personal experiences of anxiety and also inviting the input of trauma experts therapists and mental well-being advocates, as well as performers and a public speaking coach. On the production side, I spent hours and days entangled with all manner of tech. Playing with hardware, you know, microphones, recording kit, my laptop, cables, cameras and more, and orchestrating a range of podcasting and video production software. What a ride! It was, it turned scary, fascinating, moving, exhilarating, fun, and also exhausting. So it was with a sense of satisfaction and also relief that I got to the last episode of season two, which was on the biggest anxiety of all, our fear of death. I gave myself the summer off to give my creative energy a chance to recharge. I had a wonderful summer. I celebrated my 60th birthday with a garden party in the grounds of my old Oxford College, with friends and family gathering from far and wide. We had a delicious two weeks in a finca in Mallorca, enjoying fresh local food and wandering around beautiful little towns. We swam in a pool every day amid the singing of the cicadas and clinking of the goat bells. We visited friends and family in Kent and London, went to exhibitions, walked and cycled and picnicked. I loved my modern metropolitan lifestyle that co-mingled the best of what cities can offer and the beauty of the countryside, here and abroad. My summer was most likely not very different from yours and those of many other people. But it was a summer of extremes, as you will no doubt remember. The UK soaked in cold and wet weather for months. On the continent, Europe was ablaze as temperatures soared and rain was elusive. The cost of living kept rising. Conflict disrupting supply chains revealed how interdependent we all are. Crops were under stress. Many of us felt anxious and powerless as we looked into a potentially bleak and unstable future that could erode everything we now know and enjoy for the long term. Climate anxiety can be debilitating as we wonder, what can we do? Or it can make us angry, raging against the industrial complex and each other. Or we might put our heads in the increasingly hot and desolate sand and pretend it's not happening, or it's not our problem, and, to mix my metaphors, make merry while Rome burns. Over the summer, I realised that I wanted to understand more what is going on at that global level. I want to cherish and value even more the wild nature that I love so much. I want to explore how it might be possible to continue in our modern city lives in a healthy, symbiotic way with the natural world that we so much depend on. Am I part of the problem? I couldn't help but wonder. Air miles, jet fuel, car miles adding to traffic, 
burning up petrol, consuming food and other resources shipped from all across the globe. The list goes on. I felt a low-grade guilt and anxiety. While the world burnt, should I be doing all this and enjoying it? How long could this privileged lifestyle go on before the infrastructure on which it is built starts slowly to fall apart? Like many of us, I don't plan to give up the city life I have and go back to nature to live off-grid. Or, like Tom and Barbara of the old sitcom, try and live the good life in suburbia. I love my city lifestyle, but I know we all need to change our habitual behaviours and expectations in the face of the climate crisis. I do all those little practical things that most of us do. Recycle, minimise journeys involving fossil fuel, limit watering my garden, and so on. And I will keep making small changes as best I can. I hope we all do. But beyond these small personal actions, what can I or any of us do to make a bigger impact? There are many experts and professionals working on big solutions. There are scientists at a global level investigating and innovating to find solutions for the climate, nature, and our planet. High-profile advocates, thinkers, engineers, businesses, and policymakers driving change. In my own network of friends and family, a young man I know works in equity finance, funding renewable energy innovation. His sister is an earth scientist looking at satellite data of deforestation and other changes on our planet and in space. Another young woman is investigating changes in peatlands in Scotland. A friend works in the government with responsibility for wind and other renewable energy policies. Friends and children of friends campaign with Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion. Others advocate for livable neighbourhoods, trying to encourage multimodal transport and active travel. Some neighbours are involved in the local city farm, milking goats and growing community veg. Other creatives I know make films, write books, educate school children. I like to think there is hope, that we are all doing our small bit towards bigger long-term change. From individual tiny practical actions like recycling to these collective endeavours in science, policy, finance, engineering, social movements and more. Metro Wild is the space where I aim to record my notes and personal research into the relationship between our city lives and our wild nature. I'm far from being any kind of expert. I don't expect to be able to solve any of our planet's problems or make any real impact on the environment. I may find myself throwing up even more questions than answers. But one thing I'm good at is telling stories and helping others share theirs. <laughs> or is that two things? Anyway, I believe very much that the personal is universal. That by sharing one person's story, whoever that person might be, we connect to the universal human experience. As a child growing up in Malaysia, the abundant landscape of the tropical forest soaked into my psyche and physicality. I played and cycled and ran around in lush gardens, parks, and landscapes teeming with birds, insects, and animals. I loved reading and the movies, from comics to adventure novels and epic films. Comics like Archie and Superman had storylines about pollution and the toxicity of our industrial, machine-focused world. Heidi, painted a glorious image of pristine Swiss mountains. Gone with the Wind, which I know is problematic from today's perspective regarding the film's portrayal of its African-American characters, among other issues. For me, as a child then, unaware at that time of the politics of race, glowed with glorious sunsets and Scarlet's love of her beloved Tara and the landscape of the South. My love of the natural world, a gift from my own personal experience of beautiful landscapes and intensified by books and other cultural nourishments, 
remains with me even as I have lived always in major cities like Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia and London in the UK, and more recently in the smaller city of Oxford, also in the UK. My hope is that by sharing stories here, especially the stories of individuals, experts, advocates and others, that I might be doing my small bit to share this love of wild nature. It is when we fall in love that we find the courage, strength and tenacity, not just to nurture, but also protect the one we love. And I hope that the more of us who come to love and cherish and value our resourceful wild nature, the more of us will become part of the change in order to continue living in our wonderful cities within our beautiful natural world. This next article is a book review and was published on metrowild.co.uk on 9th December 2023. The Climate Book by Greta Thunberg and Climate Experts, a book review. COP28, the 28th United Nations Climate Change Conference, is back in the news. All the debates, activism and political and environmental policies and treaties surrounding the conference have to be and are grounded on science. But what is the science that underpins it all? Can an ordinary person understand what's actually going on with our biosphere? If there's one book to read to get to grips with it all, it's The Climate Book. The collection of essays is an easy digest from the pens of top climate scientists and high-profile activist Greta Thunberg. In the last decade or so, I've been generally aware of climate issues through news headlines. But I haven't made the time to learn about the ins and outs of the debate, and especially the science underpinning the calls for climate action. And in any case, an Eeyore-like voice inside me has said, What's the point? It's all doom and gloom and life is hard enough as it is to get myself all depressed about something that I can't do much about anyway. And worse than that, it's all about science. All that complex data, technical jargon, scientific lingo is going to be hard to understand. So I've just avoided educating myself about anything to do with the climate, environment and sustainability. And so I formed my opinions about activists like Greta Thunberg, campaigning groups like Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion, and celebrities like David Attenborough, based on the emotions roused in me by the media. Hence, in a light-hearted satire, my opinions went something like this, probably not unlike many other people's views as shaped by mainstream media. Greta Thunberg equals smart-alecky teenager who is probably a whiny millennial looking for fame and attention. Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion equals troublemaking slackers who get a rush from upsetting their betters and elders while we're at the theatre or trying to get to work. And aren't they the same group under different names anyway? David Attenborough equals national treasure. Wonderful to see him out in the wild, still climbing trees at his age. <laughs> but whatever our opinion of them, the substance of what they are all saying is true. Climate change is happening very fast and we need to act urgently. What is not a matter of opinion or belief is that we are in an environmental crisis. Over many decades, top global scientists have investigated, researched and tested. They have argued vigorously over results, data veracity, methodology and interpretation, in accordance with accepted, rigorous scientific processes. The science is solid. We are in the midst of a climate crisis, and we need to take action fast to change what human activity is doing to the planet. Here is what NASA has to say. It's important to remember that scientists always focus on the evidence, not on opinions. Scientific evidence continues to show that human activities, 
primarily the human burning of fossil fuels, have harmed Earth's surface and its ocean basins, which in turn have continued to impact Earth's climate. This is based on over a century of scientific evidence forming the structural backbone of today's civilization. This is taken from NASA, Scientific Consensus, Earth's Climate is Warming. This is where the climate book comes in. The big name author on the cover is Greta Thunberg. That gives the book name recognition and an eco celebrity status that is all great marketing. But beyond the hype, she is truly an impassioned, intelligent, and articulate activist in her own right. And she's only one of the book's many authors. The others are world renowned scientists from the top institutes working on climate sciences, including Princeton, Harvard, Potsdam and the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The book is made up of chapters written by each of these leading experts, covering all the topics that are key to understanding climate change. All the authors write simply, explaining complex science in ways that even I, an English grad who never took biology O-level, can understand. Thunberg pops up every now and then to introduce themes and offer an overview. All of them call on us, governments, businesses, industry and individuals, to take urgent action. Here are my takeaways from a couple of the chapters, at the risk of garbling the science with my literati understanding. Carbon dioxide, CO2 and methane. The build-up of CO2 in our atmosphere is causing the greenhouse effect, making the planet warmer. It is building up fast in recent times due to human activity and causing a disequilibrium. It does not dissipate for hundreds, possibly thousands of years, so we can't just metaphorically open the window or turn on a fan to get rid of it. Methane also contributes to the greenhouse effect, but will dissipate in decades. So I'm relieved as a steak lover that we can ease up on the scapegoating of farting cows, while obviously needing to take action on managing methane and also minimising our production of CO2. Dangerous weather. People are dying from climate change in our present time. This is because climate change is behind the extreme weather we are now seeing all over the world. The rapidly warming climate is leading to heavier rainfall, heat waves, cyclones, and more frequent storm surges. Scientists studying these phenomena can see this from the data. One of their methods is to use computer simulations to compare the weather that is happening now versus the weather without human-induced global warming. These studies show that a natural hurricane that would happen anyway as part of the Earth's natural weather system is made worse by human-made climate change. There is the human cost of storm damage, flood, heat waves, and more, such as lost lives, homelessness, and trauma. There is the economic and financial cost calculated in the billions of dollars for rebuilding homes, businesses, and infrastructure. The sooner we stop emitting greenhouse gases, the sooner we can slow this unravelling of the weather, society and economies. But, scientists warn, it will still take generations to reset our weather systems, so we need to take urgent action now. There's the print version of the climate book, of course, and the e-book version. I listened to the audiobook, read by Thunberg, Nicholas Kahn, Olivia Forrest and Amelia Stubberfield. It's like having the activist and her gathering of experts talking me through all these complex issues. However you might prefer to absorb your books, the climate book is a concise and easy way to be taken on a journey through one of the most pressing issues of our time. Please do also check out other episodes in the Metro Wild podcast. 
go to podfollow.com forward slash Metro Wild. If you like to listen to Metro Wild as audio content, I hope you will follow or subscribe to the Metro Wild podcast wherever you get your podcasts, including Spotify and Audible. It's free. New episodes will then appear in your pod listening app as soon as I release them into the wild. The link to the full Metro Wild multimedia magazine again is metrowild.co.uk, where you can find links, credits and photos relating to the articles featured in this episode. You can also like or follow the Metro Wild Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Metro Wild UK. I'm Yang Mei Ui. You can find me on social media as at Tiger Spirit UK. The podfollow link again for this podcast is podfollow.com forward slash Metro Wild. Thank you for listening and see you again soon. <laughs>